8.58. That's gospel right here. Yeah. That's a county clock. <laughs> I've never seen anything more than uh, look at the... Uh, um, we won't be able to have a vote on that. No. We have to bring it back. What do you call that map you guys made? But that, was, that was just for... Uh, Poor guy travel all the way from Arizona. It shows all the communities and with the yeah. total population that go off the retail. Oh, the extended train area. Right. Well, that's the same so number there. One minute, Ed. Well, is it? Okay. Well, aside I go from by the Cooper Medical okay. Center, there's only one other. That's what I'm just saying. We, if we had Delta's got those statistics, they could tell you exactly the same demographic. What would we do with them? Just add additional proof when we're trying to attract a retail business here. People do come. Uh, good morning and welcome to the Planning Commission meeting today, July 27, 2016. Uh, roll call, please. Gong? Here. Millie? Here. Elliot? Here. Diaz? Here. Whitlatch? Here. Commissioner Pagliano did advise that she would be absent today. Aguilar? Here. <laughs> Um, please join with me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And for those who can give the most money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. At this time, members of the public may comment on any item not appearing on the agenda. Under state law, matters presented under this item cannot be discussed or acted on by the Planning Commission at this time. For items appearing on the agenda, the public will be invited to make comments at the time the item comes up for consideration so that all interested parties have an opportunity to speak. Any person addressing the Planning Commission may be limited at the direction of the chair. Is there anybody that wants to comment on something not on the agenda today? Come forward, please. State your name and address. I'm Peggy Hunt, um, 35247 Millwood Drive, Woodlake, California. <coughs> I have a, a copy of the letter I would like to submit to you. Lights on. I do not have it right. Thank you. Um, the subject that I have is the legality of an AgWell permit. Um, I'd like to question the legality of permitting all a new permit, permitting drilling of new AgWells on property owned by RL Enterprise, Dave Roberts. Is it legally permitted for new AgWells to be drilled on land that is zoned PDFM that's still on the books with the Tulare County Board of Supervisors? to become a housing development, specifically Elderwood Heights, pending um, an EIR environmental impact review. Um, what justification was documented by Mr. Roberts to substantiate the need for more water? He's removed approximately one third of the orchard trees on the land designated for the housing development. How many ag wells are needed to sustain a farming operation no longer zoned agriculture with pending proceedings to become a housing development. Is water production on his existing wells declining such that he needs new wells for the proposed housing? He documented in his application for the housing development that four of his existing wells were producing enough water to support the 155 lots and was adequate for long-term future. So will or can these new wells be used for that pending housing development or will they be abandoned after the ag, is, ag use is needed? And then are, I wondered, are well drilling sites inspections performed and approved by the county prior to the issuance of permits? Are there specific well drilling depths? How far away from my property is it legal for him to drill and have a new well? And then I'd, I'd like to show you the maps, but they're small and they're attached when you do look over the paperwork. Um, if you look, especially on the one on the zoning map, I have two maps. Uh, it shows my property here. It shows Mr. Roberts' property. He has 255 acres of land, and yet he drilled a new well that's less than 200 feet from my residential well. So 
I'm wondering what kind of an impact that's going to have on my well and if it would cause my well to go dry. And I'd like to state that if my well were to go dry, this would not only my, uh, impact my ability to live, but also the livelihood of my animals and my existing business. So thank you very much for your time and allow me to voice my concerns. Um, I'm not sure how this works, but a written um, comment or explanation from the, the Planning Commission would be um, greatly appreciated. Thank you. Well, I can tell you, um, first of all, we appreciate your comments. This project, as I understand it, is in an EIR process right now, so I'm sure this information can become part of that investigation. Thank you. I'm, I'm partly concerned with that, but I'm also really concerned with the fact that he's drilling new wells, ag wells. I know that he drilled an ag well over on another site that supposedly that property is, um, is AE20, and that's only a seven-acre parcel. And the well drilling firm that was drilling the the uh, wells told me that his permit was for one over on that seven acre parcel and then one over here on this other parcel on the, P the PDFM. So I'm wondering, did he comp combine that permit? Did he get the permit on the AE20 and then just say two wells and then come across the street? And then the fa just the fact that it's so close to the residential well at the house, I mean, we're in a drought situation, and granted, there probably is water at that site where he drilled because there's probably an aquifer feeding my well. But for him to come over and just like, to me, it would be like stealing water. <laughs> I mean, so I'm just concerned that all the, the, the legalities of getting that ag permit were done correctly. And if they weren't, I'd like to have that well abandoned next to my place. So thank you very much. All right. Thank you for your comment. Does the staff have a copy of that letter? There's one here. We don't. We would like to get a, a, a copy of that okay. as well. Um, just to comment that uh, permitting for wells go th goes through HHSA, Environmental Health Division. So that would be uh, who issued the permit. We can look at that. There are requirements as far as spacing and distances and the uh, there's a proposal for uh, updating the well ordinance that's going to be going to the board at some point in the future, so. I attended the last Water Commission meeting and the most recent position on that was to kind of pick a wait and see attitude, but we are considering, at least in Water Commission, a possible application process for new wells, so that's gonna definitely, um, <clears throat> come to, into play in the next year or so. Okay, if there's no other public comments of things not on the agenda, we'll move on. Um, and we'll consider the, the minutes from July 13th, 2016. Any comments or a motion? I'll make a motion we approve the minutes of July 13th, 2016. Second the motion. Uh, roll call, please. Yes. Millie? Yes. Elliot? Yes. 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 Whitlatch? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Okay, we'll go on now to item A, which is a continued public hearing, and that's um, a we final the, site plan. Uh, <coughs> commissioner? Uh, yes. Not a continued. Oh, okay. This is, we're opening the public hearing. All right. You know, we don't have a quorum for that. We have to recuse ourselves. Three of us. For which item? 4A or 4A? 4A. 4A. Okay. 4A. Yeah, we'd only have three voters. So do we, is that a continuance? Gong, you'd have to, Commissioner Gong, you'd have to uh, recuse. Yes, I recuse myself now, yeah. today, and then do a final hearing next time. Let's do a final hearing next time. Um, well, and we'll make sure that the other members are going to be able to attend. Okay. And so, right now we're just doing information out. Okay. So don't take any action. Okay. Well, I'll uh, go ahead and read this categorical exemption and we'll final site plan. Recuse ourselves, please. Oh, yeah. Recusing ourselves. Okay.
Okay, this is a public hearing on final site plan, PSR 16-004, Embry Asset Group, Inc. Categorical exemption in final site plan number PSR 16-004 to provide entitlement for a 9,100 square foot dollar general store on a 39,753 square foot parcel in the C2SR. The site is located on a property at 41162-128, that's Route 63, on the east side, north of the junction with Ira Avenue in the community of Orosi. Our contact is Dana Metlin. Good morning. Thank you, Commissioner Elliott. As was mentioned, this is a Dollar General store that is wanting to be located in Orosi. And the project is categorically exempt from CEQA, pursuant to Section 15303, Class 3, pertaining to new construction or conversion of small structures. And the use of this section is applicable and appropriate because the project will allow a commercial building not exceeding 10,000 square feet in floor area on a site that is zoned for such use and where all necessary public services and facilities are available and the surrounding area is not environmentally sensitive. Entitlement is found in section 12, which allows retail stores and businesses not involving any kind of manufacturing, processing, or treatment of products in the C2 zone, and this is a by right use. However, the SR uh, site review overlay zone states from section 16.4 that no building or relocation permit shall be issued or special use permit approved nor shall any grading or construction work be allowed until the final site plan has been reviewed and approved by the Planning Commission. This project was noticed according to the law, and staff did receive one uh, inquiry regarding the project, and I think it was just a misunderstanding. They thought that maybe they had to appear at the hearing, and once it was explained to them that they received the notice, because they were within 300 feet of the project, they were satisfied with that <coughs> comment. The project is located in the urban development boundary for the community of Erosi, and the land use designation is general commercial. The project was found to be consistent with these applicable to Larry County general plan policies. The project is located on the east side of Road 128, which is uh, State Highway 63, just south of Avenue 412 at the junction with Ira Avenue in the community of Erosi. The existing zoning is C2SR, which again is general commercial site review combining. And the surrounding properties are zoned for commercial and residential uses. Here's an aerial photograph. Uh, lot line adjustment number PLA 16015 was submitted and processed concurrently with this project. And it's a project that is approved by the director and it will be contingent upon approval of this final site plan. And the lot line adjustment would adjust the lot line between these two parcels in order to allow for a stormwater <coughs> basin in this area. This is the site plan. As mentioned, the project is a 9,100 square foot Dollar General store on this uh, 39,000 square foot lot. Dollar General is a retail store that sells general merchandise. There will be eight to 12 employees and two shifts, and the hours of operation are 8 a.m. to 11 p.m., seven days a week. A uh, pylon sign is proposed to be located in front of the store along Road 128. And the project site includes trash enclosure, landscaping, and compliance with the Water Efficient Landscaping Ordinance, down shielded lighting, and fencing a six foot block wall along the north and east property lines, and a chain link fence surrounding the retention basin. This is a aerial view more 
recent. The uh, types what, of improvements. Do you know what's that building just south of the site there? That is a retail store right here. I'm not sure exactly what type of retail store it is, but the site is located in this area. Is this in a flood zone there? Doesn't that sand creek drainage come to go through there somewhere right between Erosi and Cutler? Well, let me check. The project is located in the shaded zone X, which is a 0.2% chance flood. This flood zone information is based on uh, FEMA National Flood Insurance Program rate map for this community. And construction within a shaded zone X requires no specific flood mitigation measures. However, it is recommended that all finished floor levels be elevated one foot above adjacent natural ground. Work for me. Okay. Caltrans comments have been included in the conditions of approval and they will require an irrevocable offer of 15 feet of right of way, uh, access to the state highway, curb and gutter, and landscaping. Well, so staff is recommending approval of the categorical exemption. However, because we don't have a quorum, I guess we're going to yeah, this, this matter will be, is, today's for informational only. I would suggest, and I don't believe anybody's here to speak on it, but maybe give the opportunity no. to put it in the record. No? No, just this is it. I, I would say <laughs> don't even discuss it with each other right now. Just <laughs> here, and we'll stop it right here. And we'll have to re-notice the hearing yeah, as okay. well. And we'll have public testimony and everything next time. Okay. We can't <clears throat> even have a motion to continue because we don't have No. no. It'll just be brought back. At okay. That was good. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, well, we'll move on then to item 5A. As soon as we get these guys back in here. Okay, we'll move on to item 5A. That's minor modification MIM 16-010. Mr. Doug Reynolds of Santa Fe Aggregates and Mr. Jordan Main of Compass Land Group. It's a petition for a minor modification to surface mining and reclamation permit PMR 79004 and PMR 01-002 on approximately a 20 acre portion of assessor's parcel number 064110023. The minor modification includes surface mining activities on 20 acres and adjusts the final reclamation plan contours. The property is currently used for material stockpiling and heavy equipment storage at the Cahuilla River Rock Mine. The currently approved end use for the stockpile area will not be affected by this proposal. The minor modification pe petition does not modify the following overall acreage of the reclamation plan, modify production levels, materials to be mined, or mining methods, and adds conditions to the 20-acre portion of the mining permit. The site is located one quarter mile east of the northeast corner of Road 272 and Avenue 335, southwest of Woodlake. Contin this is a continued matter in public hearing from June 22nd, 2016. And our contact is Chuck Brzezabilski. 
Ms. Bilski. Ms. Bilski. <laughs> I'm tricky. Uh, I'm going to get chair, that. Through the chair, if I have, may have an opportunity to um, outline where we are regarding this project for a moment um, and provide some background information before Chuck gives his presentation. First, um, to clarify and for the record, your planning commission rescinded its vote of denial on June 22nd when it voted to continue the matter until today to hear, hear the matter again. The 30-day continuance allowed uh, ample time to provide clarity to accurately define the project under consideration by your commission today. Uh, during the June 22nd meeting, it appeared that during the public hearing, speakers were uh, confusing and commingling issues associated with other distinct and separate projects. Um, during this time, the applicant, I believe, has reached out to all the parties that attended and spoke at the uh, June 22nd meeting inviting them to tour the facility, ask questions regarding the project. Specifically, the opponents at that meeting um, stated that it was very important to, to include Mr. Clausen, who was unable to attend that meeting. It's my understanding that Mr. Clausen met with the plant manager, discussed the project, toured the facility, and uh, submitted a letter um, that he has no objections to the project, provided uh, two conditions, that, that the mining occur above uh, the water table and compliance with the current permitting um, conditions. In addition, the Department of Conservation Office of Mine um, Resources completed a thorough, thorough review of the minor modification and has provided a comment letter with two um, conditions that will be included into the revised um, reclamation plan. And finally, staff had the opportunity to meet with uh, Karen Callahan um, in good faith yesterday to discuss the project. and. Uh, to uh, talk about the annual inspection procedures for the county uh, regarding all of its active surface mining permits. Specifically, she indicated that she had a desire to be involved in future inspections of the CMEX Lemon Cove site. And staff had indicated that they would, uh, will inquire to the property owners to see if, if they would allow her on the site during the inspect inspection, kind of like a, a ride along uh, observer. Uh, during the next annual inspection. So that's just kind of setting the plate of where we're at now. So this continuance provided ample time to really provide some clarity to this project. Good. And with that, I let Chuck do his presentation. Thank you, Mr. Washam. Uh, good morning, members of the commission. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Chuck Prizabilski, RMA Resource Management Agency. Uh, today before you is a minor mod for Cuyah River Rock Mine. Uh, this is a, a minor modification to the existing permit, number 79-004. Existing use of the site is for material and heavy equipment storage. Uh, the end use of the site, because it is included in the reclamation plan for the mine already, is going to be grazing. Uh, the applicant is Santa Fe Aggregates. And as mentioned, the location is southwest of Woodlake and southeast of Woodlake. Thank you. And uh, furthermore, the financial assurance cost estimate for the reclamation bond for the entire site is approximately $145,000, and this is on file with the County of Tulare. Uh, this is uh, just a project uh, site map, general location, Woodlake, southeast of Woodlake is the mine site. The little yellow uh, piece is, uh, is the actual project area. This is a close-up aerial view of the 20 acres that will be uh, included in the project. Uh, excuse me. Uh, you can see the topsoil site uh, is right here. Okay, the project, uh, just a brief description again to uh, bring you back up to speed since last month. This is going to expand mining activities to the 20-acre site. This will adjust the contours of the site uh, for the existing reclamation plan for a two to one grading. The end use will not be affected. And this does not modify any production levels, overall acreage of the mine site, the reclamation plan, and or vehicle use. So again, the maximum depth of, for this minor modification will be 30 feet. No mining within or below the groundwater table. And we brought this before the planning commission uh, with the same notifications as a special use permit. We also held a public hearing before the planning commission, uh, the same as any other use permit. And the county notified the surrounding property owners uh, twice regarding this particular property. So minor modification standards. 
On the June 22nd agenda on page three, it describes the, uh, the minor modification procedures in italics of so, uh, section 725 11-30. Uh, the summary of that is basically a minor modification could be delegated to the planning director if there are few or no substantial changes to conditions. That's pretty much all it says. Page three of the agenda lists a checklist for the county to use as uh, to comply with minor modifications. And this checklist, it said, does not substantially change conditions. Is the applicant under any violation to county standards? Is the property under violation to any federal or state standards? And does it qualify for an exemption under CEQA? So in determination of this minor modification, the county determined that the, this plan is consistent with the general planning zone. Applicant is not in violation of any conditions of the agenda prepared for the project because there is a previous negative de declaration already approved. Modification adds 20 acres of mining at mineable area to the 125 acre site. And the site is included already within the uh, reclamation plan. And there's no substantial change to approved conditions of PMR 7904 and PMR 01002. As per the addendum, a uh, negative declaration was approved by the county December 19, 2001. To uh, prepare an addendum, uh, according to section 15162, an ND that has already been adopted for a project, no subsequent document shall be prepared unless there are substantial changes that require major revisions to the negative declaration or EIR, or substantial changes to the circumstances that require ma major revisions. So the addendum prepared pursuant to section 15164 of CEQA, the lead agency prepares an addendum if none of the conditions described above in 15162 have occurred. So the applicant prepared the addendum which addressed all main resource categories found in Appendix G of the CEQA guidelines in conformance with section 15162 and 15164. So the county received uh, two comment letters as mentioned by Mr. Washam. One was from the Office of Mine Reclamation on January 26, 2016. They recommended two additional conditions to the reclamation plan itself. One was to revise the reclamation plan to include weed management throughout the life of the project, which the applicant currently does, and include monitoring to, to assess the success and productivity of the grassland upon reclamation. I'll go over uh, the exact language of the conditions uh, in a few more slides. We also received a letter from uh, Mr. George Clausen, and which states he has no objections as long as the no, there is no mining below the water table, and Tulare County inspects and verifies compliance with all conditions. So clarifications. Two clarifications in the minor modification, uh, which Velma just handed out uh, in the one-page uh, dossier to you. Um, condition number two. It currently states the project's to be used solely for storage and parking. It will be updated to say there's going to be mining on the site. Condition number uh, 19, currently uh, end dates, which uh, for the particular project, this, uh, this particular project will basically be extended from five years from today's date. Final, okay, new conditions, four new conditions. Uh, two of these are from uh, the, the uh, addendum and two of them are from the Office of Mine Reclamation. Uh, the condition is a reclaimed slope of two to one uh, down to the bottom of the pit. The mining, number two, the mining depth should not be monitored or shall be monitored to stay above the static groundwater table. Uh, number three, noxious weed management shall occur throughout the project life. And number four, methodology description for calculating the end use productive productivity rate of four to five animal units per month shall be included within the minor modification to the uh, reclamation plan. With that, we'd like to clarify uh, last month's uh, vote. And with that, the, we would like to clarify that the Planning Commission rescinded the voter denial on June 22nd, 2016 and voted to continue the item to July 27th 2016, and with that, approve the addendum to the Cuya River Rock Initial Study Negative Declaration Addendum 
of October 2001 is consistent with CEQA and Section 115-164 pertaining and approved minor modification. With that, this will conclude staff's presentation for the project. I know the applicant is here with a presentation, uh, so during the public comment period, uh, he has the PowerPoint presentation also. Thank you. Any questions for Chuck? No, this is the way it should have been. I was pleased the way this progressed because uh, <clears throat> uh, they gave the uh, opposition and those people that felt that they were going to be affected an opportunity to express their concerns and also gave the time then to address those concerns now and we're back. Uh, that's enough information, me in particular, because I didn't feel I had enough information last time to move forward. Uh, I'm feeling much better about this. It's the way it should work. I agree. Okay, well, this is a continued public hearing, so is there anyone from the audience that would like to speak? Uh, we have you a yeah. presentation by the applicant also. Oh. You want to is that a part? Should that go first? Is that what you're should saying? Go first, yes. Okay, we'll let the applicant speak first, and then we'll have any others. Thank you. You can state your name and address for the record, please. Yes. Uh, Jordan Main, and my address is 1822 Itasca Avenue in Sacramento, California, 95835. So good morning, members of the commission. Uh, we greatly appreciate the opportunity to come back before you, and we agree this month has been extremely helpful to be able to um, provide additional clarity with respect to the project. and. Uh, in an effort not to be duplicative, some of our presentation uh, was covered by Chuck, so I will, I'll go quickly through those areas that I, I think Chuck already covered, and I'm going to be joined by Doug Reynolds from Santa Fe Aggregates, who's the local plant manager, and he'll give a portion of the presentation as well. Uh, I am a land use consultant who has been helping Santa Fe Aggregates through this process, including development of the reclamation plan and, and the CEQA uh, documentation. And so just briefly, the, our, our presentation is structured uh, as follows. Uh, we, we wanted to just clarify the project description since there was some confusion at the last hearing. Uh, give brief justification and just purpose why we're proposing this project and why it's important to the company. Uh, we, we took some time to go back through the audio from the last hearing and when we we uh, teased out some of the key questions that were brought up. So we have some uh, bullet point question and answers where we try to address um, the, the key areas of confusion. Uh, since some or, or maybe all of you have not had a chance to see this particular site, we also have some site pictures we took very, in the last couple weeks that will give you a, a good vantage point and, and a visual of what we're talking about. Um, we will review our outreach efforts that we've conducted since the last hearing because we've tried to reach out to everyone uh, that, that spoke. Uh, I will provide a summary of the documents that we've prepared in support of the project, including the updated rec plan and the CEQA document. And then, again, just expand upon Chuck's um, description of the support for why this is actually a minor modification. Uh, so, again, just, just to clarify, what we're proposing is to mine aggregates uh, staying above the water table from the 20-acre sites that, that's located in the northeast corner of the existing Kauia River Rock Mine. It's currently used for stockpiling and storage. And our proposal involves a maximum mining depth of 30 feet and contains a condition of approval that we will not mine within the groundwater. So stay above the groundwater table. It also includes reclamation of the site to its uh, pre-disturbance use of irrigated pasture within five years. And we'll get into much more specifics about the performance standards, but at a high level, that's what the project entails. This is an overview of the project site. It's similar to Chuck's map, but it has an aerial attached, so you can see for context uh, just the scale of the existing Kauia operation, which is in solid black line. Uh, there's been mining occurring at this site since the 1940s and it covered, the original <coughs> use permit covered uh, over 240 acres, give or take. The stockpile area is the 20 acre piece that's dashed in the northeast corner. 
So what changes are necessary to our current entitlements to allow this? Uh, Chuck did a nice job explaining that. There, there are two <coughs> primary changes. There's a reclamation plan amendment that needs to occur, and under the state's Surface Mining and Reclamation Act, there's, a, there's actually uh, prescribed requirements that have to be met for an updated reclamation plan, including bringing that portion of the plan up to current standards. Uh, so it, the, the plan generally adjusts the final reclamation contours that will be achieved and, and provides for those current standards uh, to be met following mining. It also requires um, certain updates to the conditions of approval for the original stockpile area permit just to accommodate the, the, the mining use. And, and Chuck went through these, so I won't belabor them, but just the two specific conditions that will be updated to reflect mining, and then based on either the environmental review or uh, Office of Mine Reclamation's comments, there are four new conditions of approval that are being attached to this particular project. Doug, you want to come on up? And then I'm going to hand off to Doug for a few slides as he walks through um, some, some of the, the key elements of the project. Just use this. Oh. Click it. Uh, hello, um, my name is Doug Reynolds. I'm the plant manager for Santa Fe Aggregates uh, Cahuilla plant in Woodlake, California. Address is P.O. Box 515, Woodlake, California, 93286. Um, the general purpose of our project, well, first of all, this plant has been in existence for over 70 years, supplying construction grade aggregates uh, to Tulare County. Um, our, <coughs> excuse me, our reserves are about depleted. Um, we're asking for this extra uh, mining volume to allow us to come up with enough time to move to our, our new quarry site, which we call Cahuilla South. Um, we, it also allows us to continue supplying the construction aggregates uh, to Tulare County, um, and it also continues the employment of our local workforce. Oops. At the last meeting, we had some comments, and I'm going to go through a couple of slides answering the questions that were asked by the audience. Uh, first, there was some confusion on the term plus or minus 20 acres. Um, this site is already disturbed, and we've identified it as less than 20 and a half acres, and to get rid of the plus and minus, which added some confusion. Um, there was no mining depth identified. We had just said we would stay above the water table. Now we've said we will stay above the water table not to exceed 30 feet. Mining will impact groundwater. Again, we will stay above the water table, therefore there should be a no impact on the water table in the area. Project will resort in significant waste of water. There's no increased water usage. Uh, the only water used on the property is for dust control, and that water comes out of a recycled settling pond on the, uh, the plant site. Uh, applicant <coughs> doesn't state how much material will be mined. Uh, the project will produce a maximum of 500,000 tons. Mining has already begun in the stockpile area. Uh, that's not true. In a minute, I'll show some uh, pictures showing that while the, pro the property has been disturbed, it is stockpiling and equipment parking. Uh, last one, uh, Santa Fe Aggregate has not been filling the recharge moat adjacent to the Callahan property. Uh, Santa Fe Aggregates has no relation to relationship to the recharge moat, which is located on Semex's property to the south of the Callahans and to the east of our property. Uh, the last is, there was a question regarding the inspections that occur at our plant. This is a partial list of the inspections that we have that occur on a regular basis at our plant site. Um, in fact, uh, number seven, Tulare County Division of Environmental Health and um, Human Services, just two weeks ago did a hazmat uh, survey and spill prevention survey on the site and we were found to be in full compliance. Um, I think I calculated that we have somewhere between 25 and 30 inspections a year. This picture is our active uh, high wall where we're harvesting the material. 
As you can see, there is, we're well above the groundwater. Oh, oh and this is just to the uh, south of the 20 acres in question. This is a picture of the 20 acres. As you can see, it's been disturbed, but it is strictly uh, equipment parking and uh, stockpiling. This is a picture from the northeast corner looking west. This is a picture from the southeast corner, southwest corner looking north. And from the southeast corner looking north. So I try to kind of get, cover the whole, whole site. Um, before the, the first meeting, uh, I had met with the Tulare County Planning, or Tulare County Farm Bureau, pardon me, had two meetings, gave two presentations, and also a, a uh, plant tour to uh, two of the members of the Farm Bureau. And as you can see, um, they've had no comment on this project. Since the last meeting, I have had multiple meetings with uh, Karen and Frank Callahan, as well as a plant tour. Uh, met with George Clausen on two occasions, including a plant tour. And as uh, Mr. Washam explained, uh, George sent a letter supporting the, or not, not objecting to the project based on the two criteria that he, he outlined. Uh, I've met with Catherine Doe and have offered site tour to Julie Bingham and got no response. Um, I think that the plant tours and the conversations cleared up a lot of the confusion on the issues regarding our property and the Semex property right next door. I believe that the site tours were productive uh, for the people that actually took them. And at this point, I'm going to turn it back over to Jordan and we're going to quickly go through the amended reclamation plan. Unless you have any questions for me. Thank you, Doug. Uh, so again, I'll, I'll go fairly quickly through here because Chuck did a nice job uh, describing most of this. I uh, just wanted to point out that the, the State Surface Mining and Rec Reclamation Act has uh, prescribed requirements we had to meet in this amended reclamation plan, and that's actually what the Office of Mine Reclamation reviewed over the last few weeks and provided comment on. Uh, what Some key elements, and some of this ties into the comments made at the last hearing. One is that the, the current SMARA standards require that uh, financial assurances be in place that guarantee that the project site will be reclaimed to what the reclamation plan standards are. So on an annual basis, the operator has to submit a cost of reclamation, an estimated cost. That's reviewed by the county and the state. Once it's approved, that translates into a financial assurance mechanism that they must post in favor of the county and the state. So they name the county and the state. Typically, it's a surety bond that's in place. So in the event that an operator goes belly up or decided to walk away from its responsibilities, the theory is there's enough money in the surety bond that either the county or the state could move forward with reclamation according to the plan and meet its requirements. So that, that's a requirement built into the rec plan. Uh, uh, another element is topsoil uh, re replacement. Um, I think you saw probably on the slide, one of the slides Doug had the current stockpile area has already segregated topsoil and it's stored on the perimeter of the property. That will be reused at the end of mining to bring back a growth medium for the revegetation efforts. Um, revegetation will occur to the pre-project, uh, consistent with pre-project standards, so probably alfalfa, but crops suitable for pasture. And on the side slopes, there will be erosion control grasses. And the Office of Mine Reclamation requires um, success criteria to be established and those to be monitored for. And so I, I won't go through them, but there are very specific success criteria that have to be met at the end of life. And those financial assurances I described are not released until the success criteria are met and verified by the county and the state. State actually does a final inspection. The environmental review, um, Again, Chuck went through this, but an addendum to the prior negative declaration was prepared, which is the appropriate environmental document for this case. The addendum found the project will not result in new significant impacts or substantially increase the severity of impacts previously identified and outlined uh, new conditions of approval that are appropriate specific to this project. In addition to that list, we already went through this, but Office of Mine Reclamation added two more, which the applicant is uh, agreeable to. 
And finally, the, the minor modification question, uh, Chuck focused on the county's definition. Um, and I, I just wanted to, to point out that there's actually some guiding light in the, the State Surface Mining and Reclamation Act. They actually describe what a substan their, their term is substantial deviation. Um, they describe what a substantial deviation from a reclamation plan would be versus a non-substantial. I, I quote here, but it, it states that it, it's, it's a deviation that would substantially affect the, the prior rec plan or change the end use such that the scope of reclamation is substantially changed. And they give some, some areas of focus someone should look at if indeed they're, they're deciding whether it's a substantial deviation or not. One is the area of disturbance. Is that increasing substantially? In this case, there's no increase in area disturbance. It's already disturbed. It's actually covered by the existing rec plan, just not for mining, so that's the adjustment of the contours. Um, there's no change to the end use in this case. It will be returned to irrigated pasture similar to the 20 or 2001 amendment. Um, as far as mining acreage, the, the, the existing conditional use permit for the whole site is 264 acres. This is a 20 acre expansion, so it's a, it's a non-substantial increase in, in mining acreage. And as far as extension of time, as Doug mentioned, the mining's been going on for approximately 70 years, and we're asking for a five-year time frame in this new area. And that concludes our presentation, so we'd be happy to answer questions if you have them. <clears throat> Any questions from you? Thank you. Okay, now we'll entertain any comments from people in the audience. You know, we're looking for new information, of course, but I know sometimes that's impossible. Get the other one, the other microphone. Oh. Occurs, <clears throat> and good morning, Commission. Um, the first thing I would like to do Please is... Please state your name Oh, I'm sorry, address. I forgot that too. <laughs> Karen Callahan, P.O. Box 44136, Lemon Cove, California, 93244. And the first thing I would like to do is thank the Commission for the extra time given to me so I could study, investigate, and become more informed about this application to amend the plan um, PMR 7904. I've learned a lot and hopefully corrected all the misinformation that I had before, and I do apologize for that. I was confusing um, permits and didn't realize it. Today I have just a few questions regarding the requested amendment, and I feel that uh, Mr. Reynolds um, presentation and explanation was really outstanding. He did clarify the, every one of the questions I had about the ambig, ambiguous language and the confusing um, terminology in the application, which contradicted itself in several places. Um, so my few questions today, number one, and this has been already outlined to you, there is a new condition for approval and it stipulates that the mining depth shall be monitored to stay above the static groundwater table level. And um, the um, applicant's statements assure that this will happen. My question is, how? How is this going to be monitored? Number two, the original permit requires that the wells of the surrounding neighborhood, in this case, to the north of the project, will not be adversely effect affected. And I believe every county permit does stipulate that. Any that I've seen, they want to say that no, none of the neighbors, none of the citizens nearby will be hurt. Um, how will you, as a, the county, ensure that this does not happen do you know the, the current water level of the wells so that they can be monitored? It's hard to monitor something if you don't have a baseline to go by. Next question. The original permit, PMR number 7904, states 
that this 20-acre site will never be mined. I don't know if you have that information in front of you, but I could read it to you if you would like. The exact wording, it will never be mined. And it would be returned to the original state suitable for irrigated grazing land and agricultural use. It also states that the permit was a temporary five-year term of occupancy, which should have ended 10 years ago. And the 20 acres should now be irrigated pasture with animals grazing on it and all mining equipment and materials removed. So what's happening now is, is not what has, was permitted in number 7904. Um, um, the pictures that you were shown of the current 20 acres and the comment that it is disturbed, um, what the disturbance is, is, is the topsoil was taken off, and according to the pr original permit, it was taken off in layers, and those layers were um, stored. That's what the berm is on the north side of that 20 acres, which you saw in the pictures. And the purpose for storing that topsoil was to replace it when the, the mining activity, um, the parking, and the storage was removed. That, that topsoil was going to be put on that level piece of ground, which it looks disturbed, but it's still flat. And then grass could grow and animals could graze there. Um, so my question now. How do you reconcile the terms and conditions of that original permit with the current amendment application and the fact that the mining company is still there? And my last question. Finally, according to the testimony that you received on June 22nd, our first, the first hearing, um, it will be impossible, and that word was used, to reclaim the property to the original state that PMR 7904 requires if it is mined. Um, so I was wondering, and my last question is, why is it okay then if it can't be reclaimed? I think I heard a little reference to that um, in the previous presentation, is that this, the um, state can come in and change the requirements for that reclamation. But the permit states that it will be back to its original state, and the testimony here, even in the discussion among the commission was, if you're going to end up with a depression with sides, you know, a 20-acre, 30-foot deep hole, and there won't be enough to fill that hole, then how will it, can you call it its original state? It won't be. So thank you. Those were my questions today. Anybody else that would like to uh, address? Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. My name is Mike Burns. Uh, my address is P.O. Box 44011, Lemon Cove. Uh, currently, I uh, manage the asphalt plant that's next door to uh, Santa Fe Agri. It's Cuya's property. Uh, we currently purchase material from Santa Fe and uh, I've known Mr. Reynolds for near on 30 years um, as he used to work for the company that I work for. Um, they've always been a good neighbor to us, um, been a good supplier to us. Um, because of CMX's situation now, we, have, we are buying material from them and um, I appreciate uh, you hearing this uh, amendment for them and I would encourage a yes vote. Um, we need the material supply here in Tulare County I'd rather purchase from local than have to go to Fresno or down to Porterville to, to purchase material and put more trucks on the road. But uh, they've been a good company, everything, everything I've ever dealt with them in the past, and I appreciate um, your hearing this amendment this time. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Julie Bigham. I live at 20488 Avenue 322 in Woodlake. Can I get a little light on the subject here? We? Thank you. 
Okay. Uh, there's a few odds and ends that I wanted to cover first. <clears throat> Regarding the sound system, while listening to the June 22nd, 2016 Planning Commission meeting on the web, the folks at this table here uh, weren't being picked up by the microphone. I believe Mr. Washam was going on and on about something important, I'm sure. However, it was not audible. I suggest that if the microphones don't work from where they sit, then those who need to speak or wish to speak need to come up to this lectern where the microphones can record what is being said. So my question for that is, can I please get a transcript of what was said? I'd also like to note for the record that it appears that the 140 pages presented to you on or before June 22nd, 2016 are the same 140 pages presented here today. And I want to know, is that the case? Okay, regarding the policies and procedures, if you would like to follow along, I would love, I would love it. On this uh, Planning Commission summary here, few mistakes. It states that the agenda date 727-16 agenda item types noted that this is a public hearing. This is a continued public hearing. Oh, a minor mistake was made, you tell me. No, because the narration in the summary does not reflect what took place at the public hearing. It is like the public hearing never happened. Under subject matter, it should include something like on June 22nd, 2016, a public hearing was held. There were questions and concerns by both planning commissioners and the public. Public hearing was to be continued July 27th, 2016, so that both the planning commission and the members of the public may get their concerns and questions asked, or excuse me, answered. This is a serious matter. This is sloppy work, and this is like the fox guarding the hen house. Uh, in the approval of the minutes for June 22nd, 2016, not only was my name misspelled, okay, that's no big deal, but my comments and concerns and questions were glossed over and not reflected by my comment letter. My question is, where in the public record are our comment letters to be found? This is a serious matter. This is sloppy work. In the resolution, it states that no one in opposition, no, excuse me. In the resolution, it states that no one spoke in opposition to the project. There were four people whom cited opposition, expressed their concerns, and shared with the Planning Commission stories of their well water woes. Commissioner Patigliano asked for, uh, I might have botched that up, I'm sorry, asked for clarification on the definition for a minor modification. Not having any idea what the answer is will require another continuation of this public hearing if said clarification needs to be researched. Why weren't the planning commissioners and public comments responded to prior to this meeting so that informed commentary could be submitted? Last time I asked, there was 18, millions 200, excuse me, 18 million 200 gallons of water over the five years for the dust control. And where is that coming from? Mr. Reynolds explained that. But I still question that there's that much water in his wash ponds. I asked about the depth of the groundwater, and no one is sure. And what about in wetter years? The groundwater depth will change. Once, and this is very important, once the aquifer has been breached, or enough weight has been removed from the above aquifer, that water will rise and the grazing field will become a lake. This is a major game changer. 
And if you look around this area, all the lakes and ponds are being fed by groundwater. So all these pictures that you see of all these lakes, they're all filled by groundwater. Groundwater is being turned into surface water and then it evaporating into the atmosphere. What a loss. Regarding the draft resolution, I, I had already spoke uh, about how it was inadequate or there were some uh, things that, that weren't correct on it. I ask, how can you sign a resolution that says no harm will be done when you folks know that mining impacts the health, safety, and welfare of those neighbors around the mines? Who wants to talk hydrology? No one really. However, if you are signing your name to a resolution, then the facts need to be understood. So here are a couple questions that I'm giving you to ask to kind of answer our questions. These are questions for Doug Reynolds. Two questions. If groundwater is encountered while digging to 30-foot depth, what then happens to the site? And how will the property be reclaimed? And do mine barriers or slurry walls change the flow of groundwater? This is stuff you folks need to know. And then you need to ask RMA, what is the value of a home with no running water? And I, I was, <laughs> I went down to uh, RMA and we talked, I talked to Aaron about this. I want to know why didn't RMA require CMEX to fill the recharge trench at the Stillwell project immediately with water after the first complaints of residents had no water? It was such a quick test to see whether the residents' lack of water was caused by drought or no water in the recharge trench. I have tried to explain very basic hydrology to you. I have tried to remind you of the damages mines have uh, around residential property and also future causes. And I would like to know, I, I'd like to just mention that we know that there's other ways to get aggregate, but we need to get out of the aquifer. I have my comment letters uh, here for you. Thank you. Six and one for RMA. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak or want to offer speak. something? Karen Callahan, P.O. Box 44136, Lemon Cove, California, 93244. Um, I would like to add to my previous comments that um, Mr. Reynolds has been most helpful, that as far as I know, he has never, nor has his company ever, violated terms or conditions of any permit anywhere. And um, I told him, I, I really do trust him not to do that. That's not what I'm worried about. What I worry about, and Mr. Claussen also stated it in his letter, and he wanted me to make sure I, I was very clear about this, it's not the permit, or not the, it is the permit, it's not the project, but the enforcement of permits the um, monitoring, the diligence of that monitoring, and the terms of the conditions being monitored, that's my concern. And history, my own personal history, and probably other people's, definitely other people's too, have shown that permits are not, have not been properly monitored Damage has occurred, which you are well aware of and sick of hearing about, but it's not the project, and I told Mr. Reynolds I would tell him that, tell you that. It's the monitoring of permits and ensuring the public, because it's your job to protect, um, 
Well, in, in, it's your job to see that we have business and employment and people here in the county, but also to protect the citizens. Thank you. Are there any other comments? I know in the past I've asked this question, and um, on this project, in 70 years of mining, has there been any impact to the wells and property that are immediately adjacent to the mining operation? Yes. I'm Frank Callahan. I live at 23251 Lomita Drive or P.O. Box 44003. <clears throat> Your question was, is there anybody that has been adversely affected? Right. We monitor the wells along the uh, Wachumna Ditch once a month. <clears throat> and where the water uh, is fine now, because they're pumping water into that trench. But any place that they have filled or harvested the rock and sand and filled back with uh, the overburden, it is a uh, dam in itself and seals off the aquifer. Our aquifer, instead of being the whole river bottom, is now a narrow strip right next to our property. But it definitely affected the uh, depth of the water in, the st in, the, in our wells. We have two wells. And you know, when they uh, put in the uh, moat, our wells had dropped from about 20 to uh, 35 feet. Once they put the moat in and pumped water on the north side of the uh, reclaimed area there our water uh, goes back to uh, normal approximately 20 feet but there is a definite adverse effect anytime they put the overburden and fine materials back in the soil to, for to reclaim it for agriculture you're sealing it off i haven't got it with me and i'm not sure where it is but i personally took a video camera and took pictures once a week of a mud puddle that was sitting on this overburden. And it was something like five weeks before the water dissipated and it only through evaporation, not penetration. There, so. Is there any other questions? Well, I think, you know, in best case scenario, we'd like to see that soil percolate and uh, per, you know, be permeable, but I don't, it, I don't see how that's possible in this situation. So I guess what we need to decide here is the, the trade-off in a, uh, you know, in this specific situation, is it causing a, a, you know, a severe impact to the, to the day that they pull out, pick up their equipment and leave and stop pumping water over in the trench, my irrigation for six acres of oranges will go to three days uh, a week, where now I irrigate in one day for the whole week. But it definitely does affect the penetration or, of the water. And so. Okay, well. Thank you for that. Through the chair, may we have a um, uh, uh, yeah, I know that I'm Catherine Doe from Visalia. Um, and that Frank. What's your address, Catherine? Huh? What's your address? Ugh, I, I can't remember. I had to move in an emergency. Here. I think I'm on Park View somewhere um, by Pinkham. Oh, I know Frank is talking about the CMEX thing, but um, I think all of our question to the Planning Commission and Mike, we had a conversation, is when you say, does it affect your personal well? Um, how do we know, as much as Doug Reynolds, uh, the Santa Fe mine has um, conformed to its permit, how do we know whether it's the Santa Fe mine or the CMEX mine that's affecting the wells because it's all the same aquifer, if I'm not 
is it not you know the same aquifer so we know CMEX has a lot of problems but we don't know that the mining going on at Santa Fe hasn't affected their wells too thank you Doug Reynolds, plant manager, Santa Fe Aggregates, P.O. Box 515, Woodlake, California. I certainly understand the concern of uh, Ms. Bingham and Karen Callahan. Um, I think we're getting some confusion back in in regard to Santa Fe Aggregates and our neighbor to the east, particularly in regard to what's referred to as the moat. Um, I'm not a hydrologist, um, so I'm not gonna try to answer, not gonna try to give you a scientific answer. I can tell you <clears throat> that in the six years that I have managed the Cahuilla plant, including the first two years, which were actually very heavy water years, with water flowing in both the Cahuilla and the St. John's River almost the whole year. Um, our mining depths and, and our water level depths have not changed in that plant. Is it possible that we are being blocked by um, conditions to the east of us just as the Callahans are being affected? Uh, possibly. I can tell you that in this 20 acres that we are proposing to mine, it is not going to be a settling pond, therefore it is not going to be sealed. <clears throat> so long as we stay above the current water table, um, there'll be no effect on the aquifer or the depth. If by chance uh, we have a big heavy wet year and water does come up, the water will flow into that and it will percolate. It will percolate just like it does now because the material that it's going through right now will be put right back in there. You're going to have the topsoil put right back in. We're only going through the top layer of the aquifer so it will still be sand and gravel. It will go right back in. It will, it will basically be a perp pond. Um, and again, I'm not a hydrologist, this is my opinion. Um, and as far as monitoring the, uh, the depth, we have told the county that we are amicable to adding a condition that requires monitoring wells on the 20 acres. Any other questions that you might have of me? Yeah, Mr. Reynolds, what, 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 what is your... Uh what would be your plan in the event that uh, water you didn't incur water in the, in the bottom of this uh, excavation pit? Well, w w what happens, um, practically speaking, is in our equipment, we use big equipment. We use like uh, Caterpillar 998 equipment. It's very heavy. Is what our experience is when we get to within about five feet of the water table, we can tell by the sponginess of the material. At that point, we'll stop. If we get in there, if we get this permit, and we go in there, we remove the topsoil, uh, and we go down 10 feet, and we start feeling that, we're done. That's it. Because that's the way we've written this, that we will not go into the water table, and even if we haven't hit the water table, we will not go below 30 feet. So it's an, it's an either or. It's whatever occurs first. Uh, we will know. if required, we can go in with a, uh, a backhoe ahead of going deeper and go down 10 feet and see. If we put the monitoring wells in, we'll know exactly where the water table is depth-wise for that piece of property. And we will make sure that we do not go into the water table. Also keep in mind what I just said is we're not going to seal the bottom with silts. It's going to be the sandy topsoil that came out. So it will still be, it will penetrate and it will go into the sand and gravel aquifer that is below that now. Okay, good. Thank you. We gotta, we gotta cut this off. 
I, I'm sorry, I just have to respond. Julie Bigham, 20488 Avenue 322 in Woodlake. I'm not a geologist, I'm not a hydrologist, but I do know this, that if you take out the material, that's why they are mining, they're looking for specific constituents in the soil. So if you take out, if you dig out and you have a big pile of what you dug out and you take out your gravel and your sand and whatever else they need, and then you have that pile over here, there it's apples and oranges. I learned that in algebra. You cannot mix apples and oranges. And I have a feeling that once they take out what they need, you're not going to be left with sandy loam anymore. They, uh, they mine for grab, uh, sand also. I think that the constituency, and they should be able to tell you this because I'm sure they, they monitor this all the time, is that you're going to come up with like a, I think it's called a clay loam. And this stuff is not, it, it does not percolate well. And it is not the same stuff that they originally dug up. Because if that's the case, they wouldn't be mining. Thank you. I think after this, Mr. Chair, we need to hear from staff, please. Doug Reynolds again. Um, real quick, um, description of the geology in our area. It's laid down in four different layers. The top layer is um, overburden, which is organics and cold dirt. Underneath that is the top layer, which is the newest olivium, it is the quality material used for concrete aggregates and sands. And that's what we're looking for. So we're looking for the top. Underneath that is the, the medium. And it, again, is aggregates and sand. It's older and uh, less attractive to us for it can't make concrete aggregates. Underneath that is the oldest. And it is in the water table and it is unsuitable for aggregate because it's so weathered and the material won't hold up. That's the alluvium that the water is flowing through. And so if we only take the top, it is still sand and gravel, medium, and then sand and gravel in the lower. And then underneath that, I don't know, I've never been down that far, but I'm assuming there's some sort of a hard pan. But I can, from my experience, and I think that if you talk to any other, if you, um, I wish George Clausen was here because he could explain it also, is we're only taking the top and that is not where the water is. If the water were there, it wouldn't be of the quality sufficient for us to make concrete aggregate out of. Okay, thank you. I think we understand that we have some, uh, at least a belief on part of the opponents to the project that the company will adhere to the terms of the permit. I think the only thing that remains is for staff to tell us how that is monitored. The, are you closing the public hearing? Uh, well, or, uh, well, I guess we don't have to, but we yes. could. I could say yes, you're gonna close it, right, John? Well, okay, we could close the public hearing if we don't have any other comments at this time. Thank you. Um, just to respond to um, a few of the comments that were, were brought up um, with uh, Karen uh, Callahan's <coughs> comments about um, basically saying we can't trust the RMA. I mean, that's kind of the word that she's saying. And she specifically called out that, that this project shouldn't be already on this 20 acres because there's a five-year um, time limit on, on that. However, we met yesterday, you never shared that concern with us. We have this planning commission extended the time, a 10 year extension to the end of this year. So they are completely in compliance. So when you make an accusation that we're not following the, 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 the issued resolutions that this planning commission approved back in 2006, extending that time 10 additional years to the end of this year, I would have cleared that up yesterday. You never asked. You never said that you had a concern about that. So I felt that we were talking in good faith, but it seemed like it, 
it wasn't so. So our staff is monitoring these. We go out on an annual basis. We have about 25 uh, surface mines. We have annual inspections that we submit those reports to the state. Uh, and as uh, Mr. Reynolds has, has spoke, that there's a number of other agencies that have their specific areas that they monitor as well. So um, also, when she referred to, um, uh, back to Karen, she referred to the original permit, and it's actually not the original permit, it's the PMR 01002 that had that, that refers to this 20 acres, not the original um, permit. Um, as far as, uh, you know, again, it's, it got a little bit sideways, I believe, on some of the testimony as far as um, confusing against CMEX. The, one of the photos I think that was very telling is where the fo photograph of the pickup truck immediately adjacent to where they're going to be digging, if there's water right in that wall, it would be coming out to, to that area. So again, uh, some of the testimony, uh, we don't have hydrologists out here, experts. This is an expert ter uh, uh, testimony by any party. Um, the applicants are willing to put uh, monitoring wells, which we discussed previously with them and that they're acceptable to that, that that's going to clearly show where the water level is so they won't get into the, the water table. And if they're not in the water table, this project that's under your consideration has no impact on any other site because it's not in the water table. So if, you're, if the thought is that CMEX is stopping water coming from that, it's still not anything to do with this project. We're done. We're done. Um, the, the public hearing is closed right now. Can I make a comment, though? Can we reopen it, Council? Uh, well, no, it doesn't need to be. I, it's up to you. I don't know how much work. work. You can reopen it if you'd like to. You don't have to. Hmm. I'd like to hear from the rest of our staff first, OK? Um, Let's see. OK, Aaron. hold on a second. Aaron, you were going to speak? Oh, no, I was going to suggest if she did want to speak and you wanted to. Oh, okay. Hear that okay. Oh, no, you, you may reopen the hearing. It's up okay. to you. Well, I think in fairness, we don't have that many people that want to speak. We'll allow Karen, so we'll reopen the public hearing so Karen can speak. Please. Um, I just wanted to ask a question. A couple questions. Uh, you said that um, the information I had was um, the really old, the really old permit. Um, so could you please help me? Um, the permit you showed me yesterday that we're talking about, isn't that the current one? Uh, it's called resolution number 7923. Is that not the one we're talking about? 7923, yes, you're talking about the specific 20-acre parcel. That's not the overall mining permit from back in 1979. You referred to I know to that. To, well, okay. Okay, I think you know I that, know that. that. That's not the testimony that you Okay. Provide. And so in this one that we're talking about, one of the bits of information I had, uh, it states under conditions that no surface mining or removal of o overburden or natural mineral products shall be permitted or conducted on the project site. Exactly. And the project site shall be used solely for the purpose of storing processed rock materials, rock crusher parts, and heavy equipment. So I just wanted to have you clarify for me that where I'm wrong. I mean, where, well, where my misinformation okay. is. Okay. That is why we're here, to change that, to allow mining to occur on that site. Yeah, that That's was the, the major minor question. Yeah, OK. And then the other, the five-year, um, you were telling me that isn't in here, and I? No, it's in there. But this planning commission on, um, in February of 2007 took action by Resolution 8203, which extended that five-year timeline an additional okay. 10 years. Yeah, and I had never December. seen that. I didn't know well, it existed. You didn't share, well, you didn't no. share that you were concerned with that. Yesterday. No, my questions mainly for you was, you know, what is, how do you operate? What do these numbers mean? I, I really didn't know about that. And Wait, the monitoring you process. Up, so. Sure. Chad, you Thank you. The uh, extension of time. The extension of time, Reza. I have copies of that. 
Okay, with that, we'll close. By the way, the I think you had good questions, and I'm, I'm not uh, I'm not offended by what you said. So thank you for your comments. We'll go back again to Mr. Krzybilski and uh, see where we're going on this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, bringing it back to staff, a uh, recommendation from staff uh, is to, again, clarify that the uh, Planning Commission rescinded the voter denial on June 22nd, voters continued the item, and to approve the addendum to Kauai River Rock Initial Study Declaration adopted October of 2001 is consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act, so went to Title 14, Section 15, 16, uh, 15164 and approve the minor modification with the additional uh, conditions that were discussed in the presentation and the uh, addition of a monitoring well. I guess uh, any discussion on the commission? I think it's been pretty clear. Okay, well then, I guess we're looking for a motion. We approve the addendum to the Cuyah River Rock Initial Study Negative Declaration adopted in October of 2001 as consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act pursuant to Title 14 California Code Regulation Section 15164 mm -hmm. pertaining to an addendum to a prior CEQA document and approve minor modification number MIM 16-010. I'll second that. Do we need to, uh, through the that. chair, uh, we can actually make that motion after this is completed. Uh, just one clarification as with the uh, conditions in the presentation. Okay. Clarify. I had a second. Dong? Yes. Millie? Yes. Elliot? Yes. 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 Willatch? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Okay, that motion is approved. As a point of clarification, could uh, we also make a, a motion for the first recommendation? Uh, number one, I'll make the recommendation. We clarify that the Planning Commission rescinded the vote of denial on June 22nd, 2016, and voted to continue the item to, ju July, pardon me, to July 27th, 2016. Second that. Dong? Yes. Millie? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Willach? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Okay. You know, I'd like to thank those people who showed up. I've been a planning commissioner for 17 years. Maybe that's too long. But this is very complicated uh, things. And then, you know, we approve things. And then years go by, we approve something else. And to, to line all that up like ducks in a row so it makes sense. We uh, depend on the staff. They do a great job of keeping us informed. But I can see easily how, you, you know, it, you may be uh, a little confused because I, I was a little confused and I'm glad you asked the questions because it helped clarify in my mind uh, what was really going on here specific to this site. So we, I appreciate the time you take to come. So. By the way, uh, we're all volunteers up here. This is not our job, and we're glad to do it for our community, but we're not elected and we're not beholden to anybody. And so uh, that's, if you didn't know that, uh, just tooting my horn. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, kudos to staff. I think you did an excellent job. Um, there's always an oversight here and there. That's, that's why we're humans, I guess. But uh, thank you for your hard work. Okay, I think we can move on then now on the agenda. Appreciate all the good testimony.
And this item six is an information and discussion item. Can I ask the chair, just can I have a senior citizen moment? Please? Yeah, well, okay, let's take five minutes, please. Everybody ashore that's going ashore. <clears throat> looking forward to Carl's presentation. Our next item is uh, item six for information and discussion. And uh, this is on the Tulare County Highway 99 enhancement and beautification strategies. And our presenter is Carl Shuttler. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to be before you today. Hopefully this is a little bit lighter uh, matter than the, the previous one. Uh, just a little bit about myself. My wife told me not to put this picture up, but uh, when I've done it before in presentations, it gives everybody a good laugh and uh, lightens the mood. Uh, about myself, I'm a 20-plus year resident of Visalia. Grew up in Fresno, spent two years over on the Central Coast. I'm a planning consultant. Uh, my firm uh, works primarily for cities around the valley where the planners for Exeter would like Farmersville, cities in other, other uh, counties as well. Um, as, a, as a resident of the valley, I, I, uh, I often think, uh, what is our image like uh, to the outside world? And are there things that we can do to, to maybe uh, work on that or improve it perhaps, give ourselves some uh, increased pride in our community as well as uh, uh, promoting economic development. And with that, I've put together a, uh, a plan of some ideas of how that might work, but I think we can all agree that Tulare County is one of the most beautiful counties in, in the nation, if not the most beautiful. We've got fantastic scenery that people come from all around the world to see. I was just up in the park last weekend and heard multiple languages uh, while I was there, and, and here we have this in our backyard. Uh, and some places, uh, many of us, maybe all of us, will never even see in our lifetimes, but it's in our own county, places like this. And it, we probably all wish we were uh, there today since uh, it's going to get pretty hot um, in spectacular places, whether it's in the mountains or down into the foothills, wonderful scenery, and even down on the valley floor. We have beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, things to see. Uh, while we've got that great scenery, that's probably not what most of the visitors to our county see. Uh, what most see is what you see along Highway 99 uh, from the south to the, to the north, which is our front door to the world, for better or for worse. Uh, unfortunately, some of the views are not fantastic um, in, in various places. I'm not criticizing the land uses. I'm just uh, saying there might be a better way to uh, present these uses. They're all legitimate uh, parts of our economy, and I won't beat you over the head with all of these photos. Uh, and actually, um, uh, while we have those kinds of uh, scenery, uh, most of what you see along the highway is actually very good. Beautiful vistas of agriculture. Carl, Carl I have a question for you because sure. I want to refer to staff. But you know, you showed some of those equipment yards. Uh -huh. Our standard condition is those fences are to be slatted, so, uh, slats. Yeah, yeah but m many of these businesses are grandfathered in. They've been there for okay. years right. and years and years. Some so of those were in as the city we, too. When Terry, as was it as we yeah. as we move forward approving new projects, we we require those issues or those uh, standards in new projects, but. Older projects that are grandfathered have been in there for decades and decades, yes. It might be an impossible task, but I bet some of those are still in violation of code. So, Go ahead, Carl. Yeah, good point. Uh, older uses grandfathered in are, are difficult to deal with. Again, uh, a lot of beautiful scenery that you see along the highway. I took this on a day when you could see the Sierra Nevada very clearly. And kudos to my wife for driving while I was hanging my head out the window of the car. Um, and even some developed areas uh, really have a nice presentation to the highway as you're driving by, uh, whether it's architectural or landscaping or a combination of those, just give up an in inviting uh, vista to the traveler. Um, and you're probably familiar with most, if not all of these. And, and some of these are really a, an attractive model for future development, whether it's service stations or uh, 
shopping centers. Uh, I like the whimsical ants that are coming out of the building there. I think they've taken those down for some reason. Uh, outside of the county, some, some models for development. Uh, the Tahone Ranch at the Grapevine has done a, a, a simple layout of, of landscaping and fencing that uh, is a great entrance to the valley uh, for everybody. Uh, in, uh, up to the north in Fresno, um, there's a spot where there's a junkyard and they've simply screened it with some oleanders, which generally don't need water once they're, or don't need irrigation once they're, they're going. We have a lot of equipment yards and farm sales and up in Fresno, there's a great example of one of those right along the highway that has gone the extra mile in their design. An example in the city of Tulare, just a combination of, of shrubbery and trees. So uh, some guidelines, and by the way, I, I put together a document, and I don't know if that came out in your, in your package, but if you don't have it, I'd be happy to get, get that to you. But the ideas that I'm trying to promote, and by the way, I'm, I'm not here as a consultant. I'm not looking to uh, get a job or, or earn anything from this. Uh, it's just maybe a, sounds hokey, but a gift to the county, I think. I'd, I'd like to see this go someplace and be happy to work with you. If so, so can I look possible. at this online? What's that? Can I look at this online? Because we didn't get this. So. Uh, maybe staff can do that. I, okay. I'm not sure. I can uh, email it commissioners, to you. Commissioners, if, if we do have a copy, we can post that online. That'd be good. And I'll also say that your staff put a lot of these recommendations into your Highway 99 sustainability plan that you recently adopted. I think they're all there in Chapter 5. So a lot of this you've probably seen before. But uh, the main idea is where development occurs, uh, either have it open to the freeway with an attractive frontage, or if it doesn't need that, just make sure that it's screened in some fashion, whether it's slats or landscaping, what have you. So again, orient to the freeway or screen from the freeway. This is up in Fresno County. And I think some simple zoning amendments could, uh, could provide the, the mechanism, <clears throat> if, the, if they're not already in place, to require some kind of landscaping for uses that uh, open to the highway or screening for uses that don't need that uh, opening or presentation to the highway, like um, uh, storage yards and so forth. Now, those, those existing uses that are grandfathered in, uh, what, is there anything we could, we could do about those? Um, and I think we could, could do some screening that is uh, low to no maintenance and low to no water using. And I've, in driving up and down, I've identified four stretches that are probably the most uh, noticeable as needing some kind of treatment. But overall, it's less than five miles of our 55 plus miles of frontage along the highway. Uh, starting in the south, uh, Teviston, which is a small community, I'm sure you all know that, uh, a, st a stretch north of Pixley, uh, Goshen, and a short stretch through Traver. Simple screening uh, along the fences that are usually already there or could uh, be added fairly easily. So an example in the Goshen area, uh, you said uh, you use uh, either screening along the fence or shrubbery like oleanders, and the map there shows the different types of treatment based on uh, widths of the shoulder of the highway or whether there's fencing, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, the Pixley area is similar. The uh, Traver area, it's a, a shorter stretch there. Uh, quite a few signs there. I, I don't know if they're all legal or not. Uh, and then the uh, Finally, the, the Teviston area has a short stretch there. Question, what about water supply? And actually, you may know that Caltrans has a moratorium on planting right now. Uh, and who knows, that may be permanent. Uh, hopefully, it's not permanent. But the first, uh, I guess the first thing to think about is plant materials that are low to no water using. Uh, oleander is one example that once it gets going, it doesn't really need any irrigation. Um, and some creative ideas I've tried to come up with for water supply because some of these places it would be hard to get water to, but if possible to connect to the local utility uh, districts. Uh, some places Caltrans has existing water systems. Um, Visalia, I believe, is coming up with or is uh, almost completing uh, a refit of their wastewater treatment plant where the water can be used for irrigation and perhaps um, a, a contracting with a, an organization like CSET or somebody like that to have a water truck uh, pick up water 
and take it to a tank that could be set up along the, the margin of the road and then it would have some kind of solar powered uh, pump system to, to run drip irrigation um, is how one does, idea. Uh, how does the city of Isaiah redistribute that gray water? I think uh, they're setting up a system to get it to Valley Oak Golf Course right yeah. now. And also the interchange at Plaza Drive in 198 has the purple pipe. If you look real close, you'll see the purple uh, uh, valve covers. So I think they're, but that's under moratorium too, I guess. So they can't do anything for the time being. Another possibility is agricultural tailwater. I may be crazy thinking about that one, but there are a lot of tailwater ponds along the freeway that, who knows, maybe something could be done with that water. There's almost always water in them. It's probably full of, uh, you know, pesticides and fertilizers, but uh, it's just sitting there. That's just an idea. Other strategies, uh, our, our cities are generating a lot of compost now. Uh, that could be applied to uh, some areas to keep weeds down. Trash pickup is, is one that we already have in place. I don't know what the county is doing now with that, with using inmates or something. And then very selective use of code enforcement, uh, if that's a possibility. Um, I think uh, beautification awards could be considered by the county for, for those businesses that have done a great job of, of presenting themselves along the, the freeway and maintaining a nice appearance. Uh, perhaps welcome signage at the north and south entrances to the county, done in a style that's maybe um, indicative of our identity. This kind of uses a craftsman architectural look to it. And then I've uh, come up with a schedule of actions that, that's probably aggressive, but uh, it'd be nice to see some of these happen sooner than later. You've actually already put these policies from this plan into the, uh, the Highway 99 sustainability plan. Uh, perhaps adopt these simple zoning standards within a year, I think it could be doable. Uh, apply for grants, and I should have said, uh, backing way up, uh, TCAG would be the agency to work on um, plantings and screenings within the right-of-way, working along with Caltrans, and they would be the ones to probably apply for grant funds to be able to, to do those actions. The county's actions would be zoning uh, uh, standards applying to private property outside the right-of-way. Um, the other ones are, are uh, a little bit longer uh, range, like the screening and landscaping, the welcome signs, the highway cleanups. It would be nice if that could be scheduled twice a year. And then code enforcement could uh, really happen immediately, um, but, but it would be a good idea to have a sweep conducted once a year as, as needed. So uh, that's it. Again, I'm just here to present this as an idea. I'm not submitting a proposal for work or anything like that. Um, uh, so I'm happy to, happy to answer any questions or concerns. You know, I've noticed, uh, <clears throat> and I travel 99 fairly frequently. I go to see my son in Livermore, and, and so I'm up and down almost once a month, maybe. I've noticed from Modesto down, and they're widening Highway 99. So. Highway 99 is changing from 1964 when I went through there because it's now, you know, it's four lanes both ways. A lot of the new ramps and overcrossings are pretty cool looking. Yeah, I agree. Uh, especially when you're above Fresno. Um, and so I'm curious because um, Cart Mill over in Tulare, uh, that's a nice looking off ramp. That looks to be the standard. Yes. Uh, Mary, uh, 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 Mary Drive, terrible. I mean, it's a hodgepodge. I'm hoping that, you know, they're going to do something with you that. Mean, you mean Betty Drive? Betty Drive, I'm yeah. sorry. Got I the believe wrong there lady. is a plan wrong for lady. Betty Drive. Um, but in general, uh, what, I'm, what I'm saying here is I think Caltrans is going to do some things that will help the situation. They are. I think there is a plan to reconfigure the Betty interchange. Right. and close off the right. next interchange to the south. And I'm talking with TCAG about are there ways we can influence any landscaping design with that. Right. So Good I point. think there's some things that can be done that aren't going to cost the county anything. But Absolutely. Do we have standards that we work with Caltrans on to make sure that design of uh, off-ramps and overpasses and such are... Uh, uh, Commissioner, uh, 
Just to answer your question about the Betty Drive interchange, we have, through Public Works, been working with Caltrans as to that design. Uh, and if you do recall, through the Pappage project, we were working towards getting uh, Pappage to pay for some of the programs. Those were also incorporated into that Betty Drive overpass as far as lighting and some of the other uh, bike sidewalks. So we, we have worked with them as far as the landscaping component. You know, if it's maintainable by Caltrans, then that's there will be landscaping. But as far as the county, there, no, we're not really. No, really no I didn't think us. you were. I'm just wondering if there was any <laughs> dialogue so, between. So, the so yes, there has been a, quite a bit of dialogue with Caltrans through the process. Yeah. And what I about think, what about cell towers? I know you know we've in the past we've talked about oh they're by 99 so they can look industrial. Is there a movement to make those more aesthetic along 99? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really address that issue, but it's a good good point. You know, some of the cities are doing the stealth cell towers where they're disguised as a tree or a windmill, or or they're putting them on existing tall structures. Uh, so I, you know, I think that's something that could be looked at maybe in your zoning ordinance update if that if that happens. Well, I know they do my, look pretty industrial, though. I know, and my daughter, you know. She went to Berkeley, and they would always ask her, well, where are you from? And she goes, well, I'm, I live in Three Rivers, and I'm east of the 99. And all the kids from the other area said, oh, that 99, that's the part of the highway we always slept through when we were driving through there. So maybe doing a few of these things sounds like there might be something really good to see. And I, think I will important. say, I think Tulare County has done the best job in, in the valley, If you and I drive 99 a lot, too. Once you get into Fresno County, it's just really all industrial and pretty unsightly, and I think the same with Kern County. Uh, you get to Tulare County, and, and it's like a breath of fresh air. You, <laughs> you pass into this agricultural uh, uh, cornucopia. You, you do get to a few tough scenery areas, but um, I think Tulare County's policy has really kept a nice uh, image along the highway. A breath of fresh air if you it, like smelling cows. Not, I hope we can maintain that because I know business is going to pressure because everybody wants freeway frontage. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to, I know we've been talking about keeping the agriculture right up to the freeway and then trying to develop not parallel but perpendicular uh, on crossings and, and, and out like that. I'm just hoping that we can keep enough of a ag barrier uh, with the pressures of, of what so that it is, it is in fact, it is in essence and remains looking like it's agriculture instead of just a little green, uh, green strip along the freeway and then we've got, you know, development right on the other side of it, uh, mm -hmm. just paralleling the freeway. If sure. I may, um, the, um, that's the goal is to keep a buffer between our communities. Uh, we're not looking at development outside of our, our urban boundary, development boundaries. Uh, just as a as a couple of anecdotal uh, comments that in Traver we're actually looking at uh, uh, the Bravo Farms is looking to upgrade and to um, to create a better looking environment uh, so to speak. You, one of the photos you had was the the signs. You know, back in the '60s, it was always you know a sign every 200 feet saying you know are you thirsty or you know all that. And that's that's kind of a time that's that's in the past. There's a number of uh, signs that they have, and we we were talking and suge making suggestions that if they create uh, more of a um, a design that that's that's fitting for the area and maybe have less signage because. Right now, Caltrans, you can't get a sign put in in Caltrans right away, but there's a, there's a number of uh, signs that are already there and permitted, grandfathered, and all that. So the, the idea was maybe give up a few of your signs to, to put in a newer sign that, uh, of a higher standard and a higher level. So that discussion is going on. As far as uh, some of the companies that we work with that are adjacent to <laughs> the 99, we have one that is... Uh, bringing in a minor modification for some additions to a parking area and some others. And as, that, as part of that project, you know, I discussed the, the, um, 
the aspects of, of the design and what they're going to do is create landscape along the fence because this is right up against the fence. It's existing now. They're going to go where they're doing their new parking, but they're going to extend that to uh, cover all of the existing facility as well. So we're, we're trying to do that. As far as some of the signage, we, we went to bat with the city of Lindsay um, on their side when someone was trying to force a, a, another sign into that uh, right into their uh, ha where Honolulu comes into uh, 65 and uh, we took that all the way through appeals to the Board of Supervisors uh, and ultimately that that applicant had to go turn away and he was trying to use grandfathering and other things code enforcement we do go along we have a lot of um, a lot of issues with not necessarily on 99 but on other state highways uh, a lot of uh, cardboard signage, you know, things, we buy houses, we sell cars, we, we you know, all that type of stuff. So we have made us, uh, uh, just a few months ago, we made a big effort, um, and, and it was amazing of all the signs that they've collected and, and pulled out. You know, so, so there is, it, it's, a, it's a big task, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a big task. With the grandfathered things, it's, it's a challenge, but as things come in and they want to modify something, we, we encourage them to fix the whole issue. So... I, I think it's something that's moving forward in the right direction. Does the, does the county or the city control that Visalia interchange on 99? Is that, is that in the county or the city? That's Caltrans. Yeah. No, but I mean the lands around it. On the county. Like the airport's probably well, the, the city. The airport's the city, and, right. and to the north is the city as well. But on our side. And then on, on the east, west side is, is county. Right. And county on this. Because there's a west. small monument sign that says "Welcome to Visalia." Right. Um, and there's not, not not a lot about the parks. You know, there's a sign that says "National Park or Sequoia," but it seems like, from a marketing perspective, that's a great opportunity. Uh, they are fixing that interchange. It looks pretty. You know, it looks pretty decent. But, should, yeah. There's there's been discussion in the past about welcome signs uh, at the county edge, up by the river and, and down south. And I even proposed maybe a smaller scale one coming from Kings County as well on 198. Uh, you should see the re you should see the rental income from those the stationary signs. Electronic signboard, very very big, big, big income. But has anybody explored lighted signs? You know, take out five signs and put in one nice lighted sign. Uh, Are you talking about a, a video board like that? Right. I know City of Selma just put one up as a welcome sign. Well, five, as I sell you, it's five changeable. miles off the highway, so you know you, nobody when you're driving. But you get, you know, you can cycle that through. Doesn't know that we're even here. Multiple, mm -hmm. multiple Maybe we don't want things to on on one yeah. sign rather than have five right. ugly we, signs that, that are static. Yeah, there's uh, there's a, any project that comes forward, we consider and we review and we take it. Vilma, I do have. A I do have. Uh, Could you give this to Mrs. Gruber. If you uh, if you are able to review the document I prepared, I do have some strategies for combining signage, <clears throat> as well. Well, thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks for coming. It's uh, really refreshing to to hear from someone that we know is who really loves this place like we do. So appreciate it. You know, I kind of like, by the way, before you get away, I like the looks of that John Deere dealership. You know, it's a little landscaping, a fence. You see all their green equipment. I mean, that's agriculture. That talks about what we do. Exactly. And used equipment here, it's a different story. But is that what we do? In Tipton? I don't know where it is, but that was a really pretty. Uh, that's uh, south end of Fresno on the east side oh, of okay. the freeway. I think it's near Jensen um, on the frontage road. That's your area, Tavistan. <clears throat> Mm. No. Yeah. It's not in Teveston. No, but that's where uh, Gil's from. Well, that Tohon Ranch, I d I've been on a tour of Tohon Ranch and a presentation down there. And but once you anchor that in with an in and out, everyone pulls off there. So <laughs> that's, uh, I think that could be a little more attractive than a Dollar General, but I'm not sure. <laughs> But, uh, okay, anyway, how about Thank we'll you. move on to our director's report, and thanks again, Kurt, wait, or wait. Carl. All we have to do is make Visalia Pokemon stop. You know? <laughs> yeah. Everybody just floats well, in is. there. It is. It is down on Main Street. Everybody's walking around. Well, 
my trash can in my office is now a Pokemon. Yeah. Whatever well, that is. Our fountain in, in, in our office over there is, and they come over, probably 30 cars a day come around <laughs> totally. that thing. Yeah. Okay, we'll move on to item seven, uh, director's report. I really don't have anything to report at this time. What? RBT? Yes, well, okay, RBT, yes. I, I thought that occurred before, but no, yeah, we had um, the RBT uh, appeal hearing the board last week, and uh, the board upheld your decision, and uh, so that, that was a uh, fairly lengthy meeting with a lot of testimony and where they tentatively approved it or denied denied the um, appeal and we're coming back with the written findings in a couple weeks so that one hopefully will put that matter to rest now um, you know the numbers are up still for building we're, we're still uh, very active in um, in our building permits and, and I think across the, the county as well because we do Farmersville we do Exeter's as well or uh, uh, yeah both both Farmersville and Exeter and and the trend line is just up we're we're at numbers that we hadn't seen since 2005 2006 as far as the number of building permits we did almost a thousand more building permits this year this fiscal year as the previous fiscal year so and the valuation is over 324 million dollars in, in construction valuation for fiscal year 1516 compared to 127 million the previous year so a lot of that is um, associated with the solar projects that are being constructed now near Ducor <clears throat> a lot of money in that but also we have some big projects with the foster farms is putting up uh, organic uh, feed mill for uh, their Traver facility and we have a number of other projects that are in the uh, preliminary design stage so and we're also looking at the um, the first the first of the two multifamily developments at self help in in their project out in Goshen so that's going to be coming through fairly soon too so you know Mike for your information um, Valley Children's Hospital is looking to expand children's clinics throughout Tulare County I met with uh, the woman that's involved in that uh, at the Samaritan Center and uh, that'll be interesting because that'll bring something to our we, there's a tremendous unmet need right of rural folks especially children that aren't cared for if you could share contact information we'd be more than happy to, to talk with them and see lunch. how we can assist give you lunch Mike, I've just got a quick question. Uh, it has nothing to do with the, any of the stuff we've done today or what we're talking about now. But uh, last month we had a, a, a parcel come through that did a home home uh, site uh, split retention off of it, and we approved it here, and it's back at staff now. And and the individual that the applicant at the time talked to the county yesterday, and they, they'd said it's going to be four to six months before the final map is recorded on this thing and it's got to go through the tax assessor tax assessor uh, they have to do valuation and prepay the taxes and get a tax clearance from from them before right and what, why does it take so long to get through the tax assessor Paul Roland Hill. Uh, for Rita your, has for your request jobs. here um, when uh, Mike and I kind of came in um, it was taking longer than that sometimes um, because it's really incumbent upon the applicant or their surveyor to actually get the documents recorded. Uh, with Velma's assistance, we have been able to shorten that time frame as much as we can. Now, a final map in and of itself requires the applicant to actually do all their improvements. So Public Works has to review their work as well. So they have to get that out in front of any other recorded documents. So the surveyor has to work with Public Works to make sure the PVAEs are all in place. So you can imagine what kind of time frame it takes to either grade or build a road or get your frontage improvements in place. On right. top of that, like I said, Velma, myself, and all the planners have really worked much harder to assist, because we would get a lot of complaints. We even sat down <coughs> with the surveyors as to the process, because sometimes they don't even know where the process is at, and a lot of fingers get pointed. Sure taking control of that process as best we can that we can actually give them a 
a time frame of when that could actually get recorded. So it's much better than it used to be. But again, a lot of this is incumbent upon the applicant actually uh, fulfilling their obligations created by that. Right, doing that, yeah. Now, uh, on this particular one, uh, when it came through us, would would the requirements for dedication of land for a road, some, that would have been part of the conditions of approval and stuff like that? Okay, so that's what's got him slowed down it, too. It, so it, he's it, got to go back to the surveyor. Go Surveyor's back. got to redraw that thing, put the dedications in, bring it back. And it's got to go through the RMA and then, then and finally it gets over to the tax uh, assessor. Huh? And that's where the process would oftentimes fall down is because it will get kind of lost in the shuffle. But now, like I said, we, we follow it all the way through to recording, which has helped these people out immensely. Okay. You know, the lady, Karen, I don't know what her last name was, that testified about uh, being able to hear. Bigum. No, no. Karen Callahan. Callahan. Bigum. Mrs. Callahan. No. Bigum. No, it's the other Bigum. 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 Hang on. Oh, yeah, right. You know, Julie. that should be a fairly easy thing to address, having more microphones available, county council. No, there was an issue. I recall an issue with the microphones here. They were just, it was just complete static. Yeah, remember that when it was, okay. they were just touching or just. You couldn't get away from the static. It was just a huge static, so that's why. And we didn't realize it wasn't going, being recorded. Okay. And we haven't listened to them. I don't know what the condition of the recording is, so. It could be, you know, I don't, I don't know how audible. Okay. I just thought if we needed more microphones. Then. I don't think that's, I think the situation's. Well, I'd like county council to sit up there because then she couldn't whisper things to you guys. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hides over there, though. She likes that. Yeah. <laughs> this is bulletproof. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Um, if nothing else from the that side, um, I, I don't think we have any other things for future agendas unless somebody has an idea. I just well, want to remind. We're, we're going to have solid waste come. Remember, you, you talked about tires and mattresses. Right. So we put that invitation out. August we have 10th. a date set for that August yet? 10th, the next PC. Next oh, okay. PC meeting, we'll have Great. a presentation from solid waste. Yeah, I appreciate When's the that. RMA picnic? That's what I want to know. Well, the RMA picnic is on Friday. Uh, I've I've actually talked a little bit, and my view is that we should postpone it due to the smoke and due to the 111 degree temperature yeah. uh, for the outside event. So I don't know, but right now, as of right now, it's scheduled for noon on uh, this Friday. Mooney's Grove. Grove Park. Mooney's Grove Park. Mooney's Grove Park. Where all the dead trees are. Well, Some of them are dead, starting to come around again. Now you want to see dead going, trees come yeah. to yeah. You know, they ran the, that, that canal through there for a month or so. Yeah. So that's got had to help. Yeah. yeah. Well, I defended the county a little too and, late. Uh, where a city employee spoke, and, and she was once again bringing up Mooney Grove Park and, and all the dead trees. And, uh, you know, it's like it was our fault that the well went dry. You know, and, uh, it's climate change. I set her straight until she doesn't see me again. But they're sure Third picking on the county on all those trees dying. So. Go for it. Um, okay, well, if we have nothing else, I just want to remind everybody the registration's open for CCPCA, so Velma can take care of that. Just let her know. And uh, we'll adjourn until August 10th. What's the date?